Hello everyone, it's Annie and I'm here today with the second annual video for the Trans Day of Visibility. So today I'm going to be recommending a whole bunch of books by trans and non-binary authors. And I'm also going to talk about books that I want to read by trans and non-binary authors. So I'm not going to talk about any books that I've already talked about in the previous video. I'll have it linked up there and in the description so you can see the video I did last year. It's full of a lot of my favorite, favorite books. Such great books on there. Please check it out. But this video I'm also really excited about. There are a lot of new books that I've discovered um, that are by trans or non-binary authors, and I just can't wait to share them with you. So first, I'm going to talk about the books that are on my TBR that I really, really want to read. So let's go. So first we have a book that I've talked about a little bit, which is Light from Uncommon Stars, and I am so excited to read this. I got this as a gift from my friend. Thank you, Stephanie. And I am in love with this cover. I love the fish in space. That is like something that I just love. Um, this is a really strange book, but it just sounds so like whimsical sci-fi. Um, it is Compared to Good Omens and The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers, and it is a defiantly joyful adventure set in California's San Gabriel Valley with cursed violins, Faustian bargains, and queer alien courtship over fresh-made donuts. Interesting. So this follows three women, I think, and it is obviously queer. It follows also a transgender woman. The author is a transgender woman, and it just sounds like everything I could ever want. It's definitely a five-star prediction for me, and I just can't wait to read it. And then we have a book I'm very excited about, which is The Death of Vivek Oji by Kweke Mezi. This is a book that a lot of people have talked about. Um, I still have yet to read it, but I really need to get to it. It is set in Nigeria, and it's about how a mother steps out of her house one morning and sees the body of her dead son, um, who is part of the LGBT community. And I really don't know much more than that. I know that it's very hard-hitting and sad, but definitely worth the read because it... I already know that Kweke Mezi is an amazing author. Um, they're just so amazing, and they also have a uh, romance that just came out, or is going to come out, I believe. Um, but I'm a little bit more interested in this, so this is definitely very high on my TBR. And the next book on my TBR is The First Sister <laughs> by Lyndon A. Lewis. I have been wanting to read this book for so long. It's a five-star prediction, absolutely. It follows three points of views. One of a the first sister, who is described in the synopsis as a comfort woman for the soldiers of Earth and Mars, um, and she wants to get her autonomy back, basically, of her mind and body. Um, it follows a disgraced soldier who wants to find his autonomy, and then it also follows a non-binary person named Hero, and they are an assassin. Um, it just sounds really interesting, very cool space opera concept, and I love space operas. It's probably my favorite subgenre of anything, and it just it looks so cool. Very shiny cover. <laughs> so I'm really excited to read this queer space opera. The next book is Tripping Arcadia by Kit Mayquist. This sounds extremely interesting. Um, it is a new release, or it's just about to be released. Um, this is described as like modern gothic and also with Gatsby vibes and murder. Okay. <laughs> Med school dropout Lena is desperate for a job to help her parents who are approaching bankruptcy after her father was injured and laid off. So when she's offered a position working for one of Boston's most elite families, she knows she must accept it no matter how bizarre or vague the job description. By day, she assists the family doctor and his charge, Jonathan, the sickly, poetic, and drunken heir to the family empire. By night, Lena discovers the more sinister side of the family as she works overtime at their lavish parties, helping to hide their self-destructive tendencies and trying not to fall for Jonathan's alluring sister, Audrey. <laughs> but when she stumbles upon the knowledge that the Verdo patriarch is the one responsible for the ruin of her own family... Lena vows to get revenge, a poison-filled quest that leads her further into this hedonistic world that she ever bargained for. 
Interesting. Okay, yeah, this sounds really, really interesting. Kind of like a little bit of Knives Out stuff as well. Um, so yeah, I'm really interested in this, and the cover is also really pretty. I love the plants, and I'm very interested in reading this trans-authored work. The next book I want to read is Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly. This is about a baking competition and it features a non-binary protagonist and it is a romance, like a contemporary romance. So not exactly what I usually read, but it just looks really, really cute. Um, it follows recently divorced and on the verge of bankruptcy Dahlia Woodson, who is ready to reinvent herself on the popular reality competition show Chef Special. There's also another competitor who announces their pronouns on national television, London Parker, and they have enough on their mind without worrying about the klutzy competitor stationed in front of them. And, you know, they fall in love, I'm assuming. Um, so yeah, this sounds really, really cute. I love seeing a non-binary protagonist in a romance novel. Um, that's not something we see every day, so I definitely want to give this a try. The next book is a tour novella, which is In the Watchful City by S. Choi Lu. And this sounds really, really interesting. It is a biopunk, queer, Asian-inspired story. It sounds really, really unique. Um, this is the description. The city of Aura uses a complex living network called The Gleaming to surveil its inhabitants and maintain harmony. Anima is one of the cloistered extrasensory humans tasked with watching over Aura's citizens. Although Air World is restricted to what A can see and experience through The Gleaming, Anima takes pride and comfort in keeping Aura safe from all harm. But all that changes when a mysterious visitor enters the city carrying a cabinet of curiosities from around the world, with a story attached to each item. As Anima's world expands beyond the borders of Aura to places and possibilities that A has never imagined, A finds herself asking a question that throws into doubt our entire purpose. What good is a city if it can't protect its people? Really unique concept there. Really, really, really unique. Definitely something I want to read very soon. The next book I'm recommending or that I want to read is a memoir called Life as a Unicorn, A Journey from Shame to Pride and Everything in Between by Amru al Qadi. So this is a really unique memoir that I definitely want to read. Uh, this is about the author's journey from being a God-fearing Muslim boy enraptured with their mother to a vocal queer drag queen estranged from their family. Um, so it is supposedly a hilarious yet devastating story of a search for belonging following the painful and surprising process of transforming and strutting the stage in seven inch heels and saying the things that nobody else dares to. So I'm definitely interested in reading a non-binary trans memoir um, from a Muslim perspective as well. Um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading this. And now for a middle grade book, this is Zachary Ying and the Dragon Emperor by Xi'an J. Zhao. I am really looking forward to this. It's described as Percy Jackson crossed with Yu-Gi-Oh, which just sounds awesome. Um, this is a contemporary fantasy that follows a young boy as he journeys across China to seal the underworld shut and save the mortal realm. He has never had many opportunities to learn about his Chinese heritage, but is woefully unprepared when he discovers he was born to host the spirit of the first emperor of China. Wow, for a vital mission, sealing the leaking portal to the Chinese underworld before the upcoming ghost month blows it wide open. Very interesting stuff. I am loving the Yu-Gi-Oh comparisons. I really liked Yu-Gi-Oh as a kid, so I really am looking forward to reading this. And then the last book for the TBR portion of this video is I Kissed Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. This is Casey McQuiston's YA debut. Um, and it is a rom-com following Chloe Green, and she moves to a new school and ends up kissing rival Shara Wheeler, who is prom queen and the principal's perfect progeny. But after they kiss, Shara vanishes, so Chloe goes on a furious hunt for answers and discovers she's not the only one that Shara kissed. And she teams up with these people um, and have to 
decrypt Shara's notes that she left behind in order to find her. So it sounds like a cute contemporary romance, but also some little mystery element to it, which I like. That intrigues me a lot. Um, so we will see. <laughs> So on to the books by trans and non-binary authors that I've already read and really highly recommend. Um, by Casey McQuiston is One Last Stop. I have not actually finished this. I'm a little more than halfway through, but it's okay. <laughs> um, this follows uh, April and Jane, and Jane is stuck in a time loop on the Q train in the New York subway. And it's a very, very interesting romance, adult romance, um, with that little interesting time travel element to it. And I just love the cast of characters in this. It's really well developed. I love Jane and April together, and I just think it's a really, really smart book and just really enjoyable to read, and I need to finish it. <laughs> But also by an author you just heard about is, of course, Iron Widow by Xiran Zhe Zhao. It follows Wu Zetan, who is absolutely the epitome of gaslight gatekeep real boss. Um, it is also Polly, so that's awesome. Um, and it is inspired by like Pacific Rim and Handsmaid Tale. It is just a wild ride. So amazing. I have a full review up here. I'll link it somewhere. Um, but it is inspired by the first female emperor of China and it's just awesome. There are mechas involved, a polyamorous relationship, um, <laughs> and just this beautifully unhinged main character. <laughs> so definitely, definitely check this out if you haven't already. What are you doing? It's so popular and for good reason. And then we have Icebreaker by A.L. Graziade, I think is how you pronounce their name. Um, this is a really cute YA new adult kind of, they're in college, um, romance about two boys on a hockey team and their rivals, but they end up falling in love. Um, I am not a super big romance person, but I really did like the sports um, aspect of this and I think it was really cute. Um, and it also has really interesting mental health discussions in there as well. So if you're looking for a really cute um, college gay romance by a non-binary author, look no further than Icebreaker. And then we have one of my favorite books from last year, which is She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. I love this so much. It is a historical fantasy um, that is inspired by Chinese history. And I love it so much. It is compared to Mulan slash Achilles, um, like in Song of Achilles. And I kind of agree with that. It follows a young girl whose family dies and leaves her orphan basically from starvation. She is a peasant and she has a really poor childhood. And when her family dies, she has to take her fate into her own hands, and she decides to take her dead brother's identity, Zhu Zhongba, and becomes a monk like he was supposed to do, and from there she goes and becomes like <laughs> this general in this army, and there are so many interesting characters in this book. Um, it is sapphic, and there's also a really interesting eunuch character who is just a perfect foil to the main character, Zhu Zhongba, and I just, I love the character work that Shelley Parker Chan did in this book. Um, it is historical fantasy. There's not too many fantastical elements in it. It is quite a serious book. It is quite dark. Um, it is dealing with war a lot, but I just... I love it so much. I can't say enough good things about this book. You really, really need to pick this up. And then the last book for this video is A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. Um, this is a YA dark academia sapphic romance. <laughs> the cover is really gorgeous. I liked this book. Um, there were a little bit of problems I had with it, but it was just you know, a fun dark academia read and really interesting and I had a positive experience with it so I definitely recommend it. It follows Felicity Morrow who is back at Dalloway School. Perched in the Catskill Mountains, the centuries-old ivy-colored campus was home until the tragic death of her girlfriend. Now, after a year away, she's returned to graduate. Even 
She even has her old room in Godwin House, the exclusive dormitory rumored to be haunted by the spirits of five Dalloway students, girls who some say were witches. The Dalloway Five all died mysteriously, one after another right on Godwin grounds. Witchcraft is woven into Dalloway's history. The school doesn't talk about it, but the students do. In secret rooms and shadowy corners, the girls convene. And before her girlfriend died, Felicity was drawn to the dark. She's determined to leave that behind her now. All Felicity wants is to focus on her senior thesis and graduate. But it's hard when Dalloway's occult history is everywhere, and when the new girl won't let her forget. It's Ellis Haley's first year at Dalloway, and she's already amassed a loyal following. A prodigy novelist at 17, Ellis is a so-called method writer. She's eccentric and brilliant, and Felicity can't shake the pull she feels toward her. So when Ellis asks Felicity for help researching the Dalloway Five, Felicity can't say no. And when history begins to repeat itself, Felicity will have to face the darkness in Dalloway and in herself. Yeah, this book has witchy themes, and it is quite dark, so be prepared for that. Um, but I do recommend it. It's really fun. So that is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed. Please check out these wonderful, wonderful books by trans and non-binary authors, and be sure to check out my video from last year as well. And definitely comment down below telling me your favorite book by a trans and non-binary author. I'd love to get some more recommendations for me to read some more. And thank you so much for watching. If you liked, please like and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye!